trending in your area. On your side, this is News 12 at 530. A typical day in this yard turns into a vicious dog attack, and now city leaders are investigating if animal services responded the right way. People want city leaders to address animal control issues. Some are calling for policy changes. Even former commissioners are speaking out about this. Our Kennedy Harris tells us what the city's doing. An Augusta woman was viciously attacked by a dog in her own front yard. And now Augusta city leaders are evaluating the policies and procedures of animal services. January 8th seemed like a regular day for Sarah Johnson. That is, until she walked outside to bring in her trash can. Out of nowhere, she was attacked by a neighbor's dog. She talked to City Animal Services, who set a trap outside her yard to catch the dog. And it worked, but they caught the wrong dog. She made several attempts to contact services to remove the dog, but the dog was trapped for two days before it was set free. All while the dog who attacked her was still out there. Today, city leaders met to review the protocol for how animal services deals with nuisance animals and evaluate the policies of removing animals from the owners. Former Commissioner Marion Williams brought the issue to leaders. He says this situation is unacceptable. Been worse with Miss Johnson. Could have killed her. Depends on how she reacted and how the situation went. She could have bled out. I mean, you know, she, she, a lot of things could have happened. And in time something happened, we just said, oh, I'm sorry. But it's, it's too late for that. There's no official word yet on whether the dog was removed from the owners. Reverend Williams says to his knowledge, animal services went to the owner's home days after the attack, and they said they no longer had the dog. And tonight at 6, we'll hear from the woman who survived the attack and why she says she hopes something is done so nothing like this will ever happen again. Reporting in Augusta, Kennedy Harris, on your side. Also today, first of five, these three suspects arrested in connection to a deadly shooting that happened last Thursday at the Budgetel Inn on 5th Street. All three men facing murder charges for the death of 29-year-old Drayton Merriweather. Deputies say 23-year-old Ashton Rouse was shot and treated at AU Medical. They later realized he was possibly connected to the murder. The other two men arrested in the crime, 20-year-old Devontae West, 26-year-old Raheem Brown. Rouse is also facing murder uh, weapons charges as well. West and Brown facing assault and robbery charges. Also, first to five, eight, an officer searching for 62-year-old Ronnie Cummings. He's been missing since last Thursday. He was last seen on Morgan Street in Aiken, right near the Leslie B. Price Senior and Youth Center. Cummings could be at risk of injury because of some medical issues, so if you know where he is, call Aiken Public Safety. The U.S. Attorney for the U.S. Attorneys who were appointed by President do step down when the new president steps in. Well, let's get a check of the weather now as we give you a live look downtown and check in with meteorologist Mikhail and Harding in with us this afternoon. Good to have you here, Mikhail. Good to be here, Richard, definitely. And as you see, that Augusta Canal uh, picture right there, uh, definitely starting to get more cloudy as we continue to check back and forth there. Then even looking at Grovetown and I-20 right now, that a blanket of cloud cover starting to really fill in across the area and kind of settle in. And those clouds will continue to roll in as we head towards tonight and into tomorrow morning as well. Temperatures, though, still holding in the upper 60s at Augusta Bushfield Airport. And we do have 60s around the region as well. Winds out of the south-southwest at about 11 miles per hour. So a noticeable breeze outside right now. And those dew points definitely coming up so more moisture in the atmosphere and that's the perfect ingredients as we do have that stall frontal boundary making its way across our area and that'll continue to help uh, provide the conditions for some scattered showers tomorrow taking a check of those current temperatures around the CSRA again we are in the 60s around the entire CSRA right now upper 60s in Aiken uh, the Augusta Metro as well and even up towards Lake Thurman coming in right at 68 degrees one of the cooler spots in Sandersville right now at about 62 degrees there now looking ahead at your power plan for this evening we'll keep that cloud cover around as it continues to build in and that'll help keep those temperatures on the warmer side as well so hovering right around the middle 50s as we head towards the early parts of tomorrow morning and those temperatures could be in the 40s in some of our northern counties as well as we are expecting some colder temperatures to the north thanks to some cold air damming we do have some cold air being filtered in from an area of high pressure off to our northeast so looking up towards Saluda, McCormick, Washington those could be some of the cooler spots tomorrow morning with the rest of the CSRA mainly in the 50s in the Augusta metro we may touch the mid to upper 40s for your morning tomorrow as well. Looking at highs around the CSRA, those high temperatures most likely in the mid to upper 60s, but again, we'll keep those cooler temperatures to the north. Uh, Saluda possibly staying in the 50s in some of our northern counties as well, staying in the 50s tomorrow. But we'll take a look at that forecast and also the chance for some rain in just a bit. Guy? Thanks very much, 7. 
Over a year later, we now know the cause of this crash that killed Kobe Bryant and seven other people. Officials say the pilot made a key mistake flying into some dense cloud cover. He was disoriented, couldn't tell up from down, left from right. Officials say there was no sign of mechanical failure, just most likely a terrible accident. The music world mourning the death of the last living founding member of the Supremes. The iconic Mary Wilson died late last night in her home in Nevada at the age of 76. The Supremes, of course, rose to stardom in the 60s, helping to launch the Motown Sound. They were the first successful music group for that iconic label. Golden Harvest will be back out in the community again tomorrow for a mobile food market. It will be at Christway Christian Church from 1030 to 1130. If you live in Georgia, you're eligible. Volunteers ask that you stay in your car and they will put food in your trunk. And for safety reasons, make sure that trunk is cleaned out because that's the only place volunteers will put the food. Still to come, parents making really tough choices when it comes to whether to send their kids to school. One Atlanta mother calling for virtual learning until it's safe will tell you why she had such a change of heart. A steady chance for rain in the forecast. The best chance for rain coming in Friday. We'll take a look at your forecast after the break. Love is in the air. It's kind of like a fairy tale. But so is COVID. It was tough. You start off with this big dream. Local brides and businesses stuck in pandemic purgatory. Wedding was Thursday on News 12 at 6 o'clock. I'm driving up. A lot of action coming from the State House in South Carolina as state senators debate two separate bills which will move forward or be denied together. The first bill will move teachers and school staff to phase 1A that allows them to get the vaccine now and moving school back to full-time face-to-face learning. The other bill would give more than $200 million to DHEC, MUSC, and other health facilities to improve the vaccine rollout. What we do is we set up uh, mobile units and mobile tents and bring staff along and partner with our uh, local health providers around the state and essentially do a drive-through uh, vaccination process with a 15-minute waiting period. So we have to have the right kind of facilities to do the volume and to, do the, uh, to be as efficient as possible, and that takes dollars. Clement says his bill would fund rural health care clinics, vaccine drive through events he mentioned, allocate money to hire retired health care workers and others to vaccinate South Carolinians. It would also set up regional vaccine advisory committees to help fill in the gaps in vaccine coverage across the state and give money for marketing and promoting the vaccine. You know, a lot of parents are still debating on what's best for the kids, face-to-face, in-person learning, or at home doing it virtually. Both have their pros and cons. It is a really tough choice to make. For this Atlanta mother, she's now advocating for at-home learning after her son got severely ill with the disease. Zach Summer shares her story. Alejandro Cortez's 10-year-old son, David, spent 15 days in the ICU after contracting COVID-19. It was horrible. David's symptoms were mild at first, but weeks later, his health started to deteriorate. Doctors telling his mom it was due to complications from the virus. He went downhill really fast, and as a mother, you feel helpless to see your child like that. The latest report from the American Academy of Pediatrics shows there's been a 12% increase in the number of children who have tested positive in the U.S. Kids are spreaders of the disease, and they see their grandparents, and they see their neighbors and aunts and uncles. And Step one is to get these tests out. And Dr. Wilbur Lamb believes that. recently announced funding for Alum at-home test kits could be key to getting kids back into the classroom safely. The test can detect COVID with roughly 95% accuracy within 15 minutes. There will always be at-risk populations, and therefore, because there will always be at-risk populations, elderly people with underlying conditions, these tests need to exist. Testing will always be important, to, uh, especially for policy. For Cortez, it's a no-go on in-person learning until the virus is under control. Before, I would have said yes, but after seeing what it can do, it's not worth it. School nurses in South Carolina are being overwhelmed by contact tracing. Now those nurses are worried their workload will only increase with calls from Governor McMaster to return to five-day in-person learning. School nurses also largely responsible for giving rapid COVID tests to students, which are in at least 47 school districts. This has been definitely the, the biggest undertaking that school nurses have faced this year. Um, it's, a, it's a massive job, checking for close contacts, looking at seating charts in classrooms, things like that. 
Governor McMaster's budget from January does have money set aside for every school to hire its own nurse. To weather now as we take a look outside from our camera in Columbia County overlooking I-20 at the Grove Town exit there and check in with meteorologist Mikhail Hannah Harding. No complaints, Mikhail. It's felt really good the last couple of days. That's right, Richard. It has felt really good the last couple of days. We've had some warmer temperatures, and today I think takes the cake so far. Looking out at Grove Town and I-20 once again, you can see those clouds definitely starting to fill in with the Augusta Almanac showing that we actually hit a high temperature today of 74 degrees after starting off in the upper 40s, so not a bad rebound right there. Not quite the record that we set back in 1957, but nevertheless, still pretty impressive for this time of year. Uh, the average high temperature uh, right about this time of year, right around 61 degrees, so 74, definitely well above that, and we'll see that sun setting here in the next 20 to 25 minutes as we continue on through your evening. Taking a look back at the month in review and looking back at January, the last time that we actually had a temperature at or above 70 degrees was not uh, since January 26th. So uh, today, a pretty warm day, and we haven't seen a day this warm in a while, and definitely, again, above average for this time of year. Doppler Max radar showing some cloud cover now, starting to fill in across the CSRA after we saw a mixture of sun and clouds across the region today, and some areas getting more sunshine than others. But looking at your hour by hour forecast, we will continue to see this cloud cover starting to build in across the region as we go through this evening and into tomorrow as well. So taking you towards about 7 p.m., you can see some areas still uh, getting away from that cloud cover, but as we head towards midnight tonight and then into your morning tomorrow, these clouds will help keep those temperatures mainly in the 50s, but some of our northern counties expected to dip down into the 40s, and maybe even here in the Augusta Metro, starting your morning off in the upper 40s tomorrow morning. The chance for some isolated shower activity possible uh, before about 10 a.m. tomorrow, but the best chance not really coming in until after about 10 a.m. as we head through your forecast. So going towards midday tomorrow, you can see some of that uh, green starting to pop up on the map and that shower activity becoming scattered around the CSRE as we head towards dinner time tomorrow. Lingering showers going right on through tomorrow evening into your Thursday morning as well. And that cloud cover once again helping to keep us our low temperatures on the warmer side with those temperatures dipping down towards the 50s and not quite into the 40s. Looking at your rainfall totals through Thursday morning, not expecting many areas to pick up uh, more than a quarter of an inch, uh, really less than that. But as we take you all the way through Sunday, we can see some areas once it's all set and done, as we do have a lot of rain in the forecast over the next few days, possibly picking up near two inches of rain. So we'll just continue to monitor uh, these rainfall totals as we go day by day over the next few days. Looking at low temperatures tonight, again, we are expecting some cooler temperatures for the northern parts of the CSRA. Temperatures right around the upper 40s here in the Augusta Metro, and then most likely staying in the 50s as we head towards the southern parts of the region. High temperatures tomorrow will keep those cooler temperatures in the northern CSRA. Once again, some areas struggling to make it out of the 50s, and then we'll have those temperatures near the mid to upper 60s for tomorrow, possibly, but most likely staying in the middle 60s for a lot of areas across the region tomorrow. Your three-day forecast looking ahead towards Friday. Those rain chances do jump up to about 70 percent. Temperatures staying in the 60s over the next three days. And as we go towards Saturday and Sunday, we keep those temperatures right around the mid to upper 50s. Valentine's Day, not looking too bad. A slight chance for rain, but we dry things out as we head towards next Monday and Tuesday. Guys? The Senate has officially voted to move forward with the impeachment trial. Senators voted 56 to 44 to proceed. Today's argument was whether the trial was constitutional in the first place. Tomorrow, the Senate will pick back up in day two of the impeachment trial. Well, even if you haven't gotten COVID-19, the pandemic can still be hurting your health in other ways. Dentists say there's been a real decline in oral health since the pandemic began. Part of this is because a lot of us are delaying our dentist appointments because of the stress of the pandemic itself. Officials say they're seeing an uptick in cracked and chipped and untreated teeth, which will only add to problems later on. A lot of it is just a result of people just not getting into the dentist. Like I said, that routine of seeing the dentist every six months has kind of gotten interrupted. So dentists say you should still get those checkups twice a year if you can, and while the CDC says you should take extra precaution when visiting your dentist and try to prioritize the most serious oral issues first. You're not the only one hearing my voice right now. Google, Alexa, and Siri are all listening to what we say right now. I'm Jamie Tucker. Coming up, we're going to hear what they've recorded to find out if it's something we should worry about. Zero percent APR for 60 months on a new 2021 Toyota Corolla and 90 day payment deferral. Toyota, let's go places. All right, we all have Amazon Alexa, maybe you have a Google, Siri, just in about every one of our households. And if you've got one, you're probably wondering, 
Are they always listening? There's a room full of them right now, probably surrounding you. But even more, what do they do with what they hear? Jamie Tucker gives us an inside look. The solution is actually a problem. If we need help by saying, Alexa, OK Google, or Hey Siri, we've got to give up some degree of privacy. They're listening all the time, as you can see. Is it something we should worry about? Hey Google, what time is it? The microphones are always on because they're listening for their wake word. Otherwise, they wouldn't answer when you called for them. Sometimes they think you call their name, and they record what you say. So what happens to those recordings? Well, Google says if you opt into saving your audio recording, software extracts that information from the song, but does not associate it with your Google account. Trained experts do listen to keywords to improve their system, but they don't know it's you. Alexa records anytime you Alexa. say or it thinks you say Alexa. Take a look. Go to settings in the Alexa app and open activity and voice history. You can see all the recordings and even listen to them. Those audio was not intended for this device. They were still recorded. As you can see, my Alexa devices recorded 25 clips in just one minute. A small number of Amazon employees listen to some of those recordings, but Amazon insists the recordings are not tied to anyone's account or name. Now, Apple doesn't give you the option to review recordings of when you said or it thinks you said, Hey Siri, it gives you the option, though, to delete your Siri and dictation history. Of course, you can't turn off the microphones for all of these devices. question is, do you want to give up privacy or convenience? That's what's at tech. I'm Jamie Tucker. Can't we just have it all? Yeah, <laughs> I'm thinking so. But I'm also wondering if, you, if your phone will run faster, if you do delete all that that's being stored on there for yeah. every question you've ever asked. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. You try it and report back to I'll the let you know. I'm intrigued. I'm going to try a new one. Hey, Mikkel, what's the weather? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one, Richard. <laughs> Temperatures in the 60s the rest of the week, but a soggy forecast as well. We'll take a look at that in just a bit. fun to do Valentine's Day weekend. Grab your favorite running shoes, grab whatever you feel like, and the Cupid Shuffle is going on. It's a three to six mile jog. It goes on this Saturday starting at eight in the morning. Race will start at Lake Olmstead Trailhead. You can walk, you can run, and your furry friends are invited as well, so you can bring the dog. The event is hosted by Fleet Feet Augusta. Mikhail, how's the weather look for that event? Well, that has been looking pretty good, but for tonight, we'll keep some cloudy skies around those temperatures right around the upper 40s. And then as we head towards tomorrow, we'll see those temperatures right around the 60s across the CSRA once again. So some warmer temperatures in store, just unfortunately the chance for that rainfall coming in the picture as well. Looking at highs tomorrow around the CSRA, expecting some cooler temperatures for the northern parts of the region, possibly some areas only making it into the mid to upper 50s as we head up towards Sal Saluda, McCormick counties, and some of our northern counties in Georgia as well. But mainly going to stay in the mid to upper 60s for some of our southern counties across the CSRA. We do have rain in the forecast the next few days. The best chance coming in Friday at a 70% chance for that rain all throughout your day on Friday, and mainly some scattered showers as we head towards your day tomorrow, and then also Thursday as well. Keeping that rain chance right on through the next few days. Temperatures in the 60s, and then we drop back towards the 50s for the weekend. Valentine's Day looking cool with a slight chance of rain as well. Pretty comfortable temperatures for the week ahead. Mikhail, thanks very much. We are just moments away from News 12 at 6 o'clock. Stay tuned. We're back after a short break.